then you would have a better idea. Oh, things of God actually is a lot better than the things of this world. But you will know that because you made that mistake and you fell, and you were able to get back up with the help of God. You will learn how good, how loving God is. Learn how valuable God's atoning sacrifice for you is. Because when you sin, when you, when you sin, and you sin, and you sin over and over again, and you think, maybe I'm just an impossible person. I'm just a sinful person. There's no hope for me. But then you realize again and again, God died for every one of that sin, sin, and he's helping me say, it's okay. I already paid that price for you. He's allowing us to fall so we could learn how precious God's atoning sacrifice is. We learn how worthy God is of our worship, that we glorify him. We learn how beautiful and enjoyable and desirable God is. Not that God is handcuffed to me, but I want to spend that time with God. I learned that by making mistakes, by living a life without the presence of God, and then realize, you know what? God is beautiful. I want to spend time with God. That's the system that God implemented. Learning that my whole purpose in life is to discover that I want to be with God for all of eternity. Why are you born? You know, this life is what? 40 years, 50 years, 80 years, 100 years maybe, and then you die. And then what happens is like the entire rest of your existence is eternity. I think Francis Chan demonstrated this by getting like a roll of toilet paper, and he starts stretching out the toilet paper all the way from here to all the way over there. And he took out a little piece and said, that's your life right here. And everything else is what's remaining. Well, what? why does God give us this tiny little 60, 70 years of life to live? Because we need to learn. We need to know that God is beautiful. God is wonderful. God is loving. We have to realize that we are sinful. It's this realization, this falling, sinning, and getting back up. So as we mature, we learn, wow, God, I want to spend the eternity, all, all eternity with, with, with God. We have to come to the realization. That is actually the purpose of our existence right now. That's why God is not talking to us audibly, because he doesn't want to force our hand to be this power over us. Secondly, I, I, I want to tell you that God does right now speak to you and that you can and are, and are speaking to him already. All of you know what I mean by this, right? Let me read Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 right here. It says this, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our Father by the prophets. But in these days, in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed the heir of, of all things, through whom also He created the world. You know, Adam talked to God. He actually walked with God. Noah received verbal instructions for the ark. Abraham bargained with, with God when it came to saving Sodom and Gomorrah. Moses saw the burning bush and received God's instruction. Samuel heard God calling him, Samuel, Samuel. We read that God spoke to these people in Old Testament, and we're kind of disappointed that God doesn't speak to us like that anymore that we do want to hear God's voice like that. But we are reminded that out of the billions of people who lived in Old Testament, there were only few people that actually got to spoke to God. And God only talked to them in a very specific instances for his specific purpose. It wasn't like a conversation that he doesn't talk to everyone in everyday life. 
So we have to stop the misunderstanding that, oh, before God was like this, and now he's changed. No. But it tells us that God, when he became human in the incarnate of Jesus Christ, that he spoke to people in flesh, physically. He met people, and he taught the dis disciples. He says, Peter, who do you think I am? John, the disciple I love. He spoke to thousands and thousands of people. When Jesus Christ was crucified and resurrected, he repaired the communication system with God. Before, we were in the dark. People only spoke, actually, people only listened to God whenever God chose. Now, when Jesus Christ died, he repaired that, that communication system where God says what? What Jesus Christ, when he ascended, he promised that he's going to send and speak to us through his Holy Spirit. In fact, we are now becoming the temple of God. God's actually going to live with me. Instead of talking to God like I talk to my parents, it's like having my parents inside of me, which kind of seems kind of weird now, but what's better than our conversation is always having God with me. It says that we are the temple of God and that God resides in me. Sometimes it's easy to think that what we have now is not as good as the spectacular way that God communicated in the Old Testament. But I assure you that what we have today is a lot better than what people had in Old Testament. That God subtly but continuously talks to you. You know, God feeds your mind of thoughts. God convicts your heart of the sinfulness, of your sinfulness. God helps us see the things and people and circumstances around us. God inspires us to choose good rather than bad. God moves our hearts to love God and others. Not only is God able to communicate with us whenever and wherever, we are also able to communicate with God whenever and wherever in our QT and our prayer. And I guarantee you, like I said, having God speak to us in this subtle way is a lot better than God just telling you things all the time. Because he gives us a choice. He gives us a recommendation. He gives us a thought. He gives us a conviction. But now it is my free will to take it or not. And God, even though we don't take it, he doesn't say, okay, you didn't listen to me now. Now I'm not going to be with you. No. God is always waiting for us with his arms open as he's waiting for the prodigal son. Now, so the first evidence that, that we belong to God, to that, that we belong to Jesus' flock, is that we hear his voice. And what happens when we hear to his voice, Jesus says next is this, he knows us. We listen to his voice and he says, I know you because you listen to my voice. It is very, is it very important that Jesus Christ knows you? Is it important? How many of you remember Jesus' fearful proclamation of, I don't know you, depart from me? Wow. That's the nightmare for every single Christian. Actually, I talked to my wife about this the other day. Can you imagine? You die and you meet Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ says, I don't know you. That would be the worst news of, of my entire life. Jesus knowing us is not only important, it's all important. There's nothing more important than that in my entire existence. So, 
Does Jesus know you? If God came right now, would he be like, Oh, my lovely daughter, Hannah, I love you so much. Or, I don't know you. Who are you? We don't even want to think about that, actually. So do you recognize the voice of Jesus Christ? In your quiet time, when you read the Word of God, when you pray, when you live your life, do you actively, intently, purposefully listen for the voice of God? Or you just try to just go through that, those passages as fast as you can so you could just answer that question and just close that Bible and just move on to your next thing? Well, how do I know if I'm listening? And this takes us to our second evidence. Let me read from the verse 27 again. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Bible tells us that those who hear God's voice, I mean really hear God's voice, the people who that God knows, follows Him. So, are you following Jesus Christ? For all of you right now, I would say yes. I mean, you're taking your time to worship God. You are taking time out of your life to follow Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus' voice is not the only voice that you are hearing, is it? Jesus' voice is in competition with the voice of the world. Jesus tells us not to retaliate, but to love. But the world tells us that if you don't retaliate, that's a sign of weakness, that people are going to just trample all over you. That you have to stand your ground. Jesus tells us that you must be humble. But the world is telling us, be proud of who you are. I don't care if it's a good thing or a bad thing. You have to be proud. Jesus tells us to ask for and be satisfied with your daily bread. But the world tells us to set our goals high and reach for the sky. And never settle for second best. Jesus' voice is always in competition. Jesus' voice is in competition with the voice of Satan. How many of you saw cartoons where you have like the devil on one side and the angel on one side and they're talking to you and try to convince you to kind of do what they want? Have you seen cartoons like that? Well, I'm sorry to say it is actually kind of true. Satan knows your weakness, every one of you sitting here, including me. He knows my weakness better than anyone else. And he has a custom plan to attack you. And he's attacking you already. Don't be lured by Satan. Don't be tricked into listening to the voice of Satan and not listening to the voice of your shepherd, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, his voice is in competition with your voice. The voice of your wishes and your desires, what you want to do, your sinful nature. Why is my voice called a sinful nature? I'm not that sinful. Well, we call it simple, sinful nature because the nature is not to listen to the voice of God, but to listen to my voice. Not to do what God wants me to do, but do what I want to do. That's why it's called sinful nature. Your voice is telling you, do what you want to do. Do what makes you happy. What God wants, you know, that's, you know, parents are just telling you that because they don't want you to have any fun. You, if you listen to your voice, you're going to keep doing the things you want to do. Say things you want to say. When you feel bad, boom. Forget about being humble. Forget about being loving. I'm mad and I'm going to let the whole world know about it. So I want all of you to examine your hearts right now. Whose voice did you decide to listen to yesterday? Saturday? All day? Whose voice were you listening to? Was it God? Was it your shepherd? Was it the world? Was it Satan? Was it your own voice? 
Whose voice are you choosing to listen to right now when you hear this message? Whose voice will you choose to listen to tomorrow when your school day starts? As we close, the very words that you guys probably like the most, as we close, I want to remind all of you of Jesus' fearful message today, that if you are refusing to hear the voice of God, in other words, if you are not meditating on God's word, if you are not praying to God, if you are not spending time with God in your QT, if you are not following your shepherd, Jesus Christ, in other words, if you are choosing rather to listen to the voice of the world, Satan, or yourself, if you are choosing not to obey God, if you're choosing to listen to your own ways instead of following your shepherd, then you are not part of Jesus' flock. Jesus will tell you, I do not know you. Depart from me. Today's scripture ends with the outcome of belonging to Jesus Christ and his flock. Verse 28 and 29 says this, I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of Father's hand. Jesus tells that when you belong to his flock, to him, you have eternal life. Not only the duration, but the quality. You have eternal, good, happy, joyful life. And no one is able to snatch you out of his hand. The only person who can snatch you out of his hand is yourself. If you never actually belong to his hand in the first place. Because God is not going to force you. He's not going to talk to you audibly. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do, my, do what I want to do. God's not going to do that. I pray that all of us today would think about this. Am I hearing the voice of God? Am I choosing to follow Jesus Christ and his will for my life in the Bible? Do I belong to him and does he know me? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. You are so gentle, Lord. You don't overwhelm us by just threatening us all the time, every single moment of our life. No, instead, you reside in our hearts and you gently whisper to us, that's not the way. That's not the way, Hannah. That's not the way, Joyce. That's not the way, Jenna, Yonu, Jimin, Nathan, Jesse, all of us. He is gentle Father who always waits for us. He actually knows that we have to go through this so that we discover how valuable and good God is. But every time when you don't listen to God, you will be hurt. You will experience pain. Because life, when you drift away from God, is going to be hurtful. And God doesn't want you to live that way. You guys in your junior high, your middle high, your, your middle school and your high school, this is the time when you discover God. When you establish a personal relationship with him. I pray that right now you will be committed, each and every one of you, to listening to the word of God. That you'll be dedicated to, to meditating on his word, to pray, to continue to start the day, to hear what you would have to say in your conscience, in your mind, in your thoughts. And that you will follow him because you know he knows you. He's looking down upon you with a smile on his face. And the Holy Spirit is warm in your heart, and your heart is soft and not hardened. I pray that you would experience this life and know how good and enjoyable this life is. 
Our Heavenly Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just guide us, Lord. That you would just take us by the heart and just lead us to where you would want us to go. I pray that you would be able to help us hear your voice in our mind, in our heart, in our thoughts. And give us the power, the determination to follow you and not to follow the voice of the world or Satan or even myself, Lord. I pray that you will be glorified in my life by having us enjoy you, Lord. We pray all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, I just pray that you would be with each and every one of us as you keep us safe and healthy throughout this, this pandemic and this dangerous and sinful world around us, Lord, that you provide our daily bread and we'll be satisfied throughout this week that you will keep us, Lord. We pray all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.